how we use data and scientific literature and research in En-ROADS. We're constantly updating En-ROADS to stay abreast of the latest advancement in climate science, energy science, economics, all of those areas. And we use scientific data and research in three main ways, setting the constant and parameters, initial conditions and values in the model, Secondly, the equations informing our understanding of how the system works and also adopting model structure from other modelers. And then third, comparing our results against historic data, but also others' models, other scenarios of the future. Overall, I'm gonna focus here on some things that will help you, particularly when you answer the question that people often ask, hey, where did you get your data? All right, here we go. <clears throat> First, En-ROADS is an independent mathematical model. Starts in 1990 and then a set of equations run out all the different variables that you see in the graphs out 110 years, independently driven by the equations that are written in the model. It is driven by some external forces, such as things that we couldn't really guess, like when Mount Pinatubo, a volcano, would overall cool the earth or several of the global recessions. We actually directly use UN uh, population data. But overall, this should clear up some of the common misconceptions when people ask, hey, where did you get your data? Some people will see the interface and think that we have built a front end or a skin on top of somebody else's scenario, say the International en Energy Agency scenarios, for example. That's not how it works. This is an independent model. And we'll show you how we use data in three big ways in En-ROADS. The first way is for parameters, constants in the model, initial conditions. Initial conditions, for example, with population, we start the model in 1990. You know, it, you get to see the graph here for population in 2000 and on. Well, back here, in 2000, there were 6.1 billion people. In 1990, there were 5.3. Getting a number like that is one of the many different initial conditions that we need to go research from other data sources. And it's got to do not just with this, but atmospheric concentration of carbon and methane and how big the capacity of coal, oil, gas, nuclear, renewables, what's the temperature, what's the energy intensity, all of those initial conditions are data that we pull from other sources. Also, just for parameters in the model, one example of this would be the progress ratio. Every doubling of carbon reduces the cost of energy sources by a certain percentage. That number is in the model and you can see it here as, and the sources, Junginer et al., McDonald et al. were the two papers that informed why we chose 0.8 as the progress ratio. The next example of the way that we use data, pull up the Benson model, is for model structure, model equations. For example, here in En-ROADS, the structure for the carbon cycle, that is CO2 in the atmosphere, carbon in biomass and humus and in the ocean, we originally adopted from a paper by Gudrian and Kettner. That gave us this overall structure. And then we, and particularly the modeler Tom Fiddeman, adapted it for C roads and now for our model N roads. The third big way that we use data is we compare our model results against both what actually happened in the system, what we call historic data, and also other models' future projections. And I'd like to offer a couple examples of how we learn from that comparison. As I said, we start the model in 1990. We have a bunch of equations that drive how it runs. So then we need to find ways to build our confidence that we got it right. So here is the data for overall electricity generated by renewable energy, wind and solar from 1990 out to 2019. And it shows the International Energy Agency World Energy Outlook, actual data, and then British Petroleum data, both of those sources. So this is the actual data. And on top of it, you can see in the blue dots, 
the old baseline, the 2018 version of C roads. Oh, excuse me, of N roads. So there it is growing and then growing out here. And you can see this exponential growth curve. Now, when we looked at this in 2020, when we thought to redo our baseline and we broke up renewables and the prices for wind, for wind and solar separate and the growth of wind and solar as separate, we decided, we thought that we, we were growing too fast in the 1990s and too slowly in the 2010s. So we rebuilt that structure, changed some of the parameters in, in it, and recalibrated the structure to create the solid blue line. And you can see the new calibration that matches the history much better. So the, the challenge of matching historical data helped us improve the equations and the parameters in the model itself. This is how we learn from this comparison. And you can imagine it has many implications because in the old scenario, heading into the 2020s, the growth rate was this, much slower. In the new scenario, it's growing much faster. And that had important implications. So that's one way that we learn from comparison. Another way we learn from comparison is with other models and other model scenarios. This goes from 1990 all the way out to 2100 for primary energy from coal. The red, the purple, the green, these dashed lines are scenarios from a scenario called SSP2. It's the middle of the road scenario for a radiative forcing of 2.6. That is a reduction scenario achieving a temperature around two degrees for coal. And you can see that the other models have coal falling, rising to some degree. And then there's our line in blue where it was growing similarly and then flat and then falls much later. So when we looked at this, we thought, huh, all the models out here in the 2050s are some of them have half the coal. What could be wrong with En-ROADS? Now, we don't think that those other models are perfect, but when we're this far outside of the envelope of the others, it leads us to ask why. We looked closer at the equations and agreed that there were some things that we had missed that we wanted to add and improve the model. So we did and came up with a new scenario with these improved parameters, approved equ improved equations here. So we went from here to here, here to here. So this is an example of using comparison against other scenarios in order to learn. All right, these are the ways that we use data, other scenarios and scientific research to improve En-ROADS and to build it just to start out with. Three big ways, the parameters and the constants, the structure and equations, and then third comparison for confidence building. Hope this was helpful. Go get them.